All right, welcome back. So today I thought we would do something a little different in so far as that I'm going to go through and talk a bit about how I choose a photo from a specific burst shot series, whatever you want to call it. Um, here we have a mockingbird. Now it's obstructed partially, but I've been playing with that because, you know, backyard birds or common birds, you're going to see them through the sticks and leaves and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and people tend to want the ultra clean looking shots, you know, more along the lines of this. Now, this isn't a great one because I'm below the bird, but, you know, but yeah, something more along this or here we go like that. Um, but I'm, I'm finding more interest in these kind of habitat shots, I guess. Um, that right there is just, I mean, it's a very basic, I think, song sparrow just in the Forsythia. And it's interesting to me because that's really how you would see the bird in, in real life. It, it's, it's not going to be perfectly posed and all that kind of stuff. Um, the mockingbird shots here are compelling to me because I have a real interest in connecting with these birds, um, you know, uh, on a level that we don't normally get to do. So with that in mind, anyone who's seen my previous videos knows I'm pretty focused on the eye of the bird and the iris and capturing that personality, whatever you want to call it of the bird. So this burst was taken at 100 ISO, 1 200th of a second with the 840. So that would be the 600 plus the 1.4 teleconverter. So a lot of lens and I'm standing relatively close. As we can see, this is not cropped. So, um, but with that in mind, we have a couple of options here. They're all pretty much equally sharp. Um, and so what we're really looking at with these various things are subtle tone differences. And these haven't been edited yet either. This is just auto adjust and, you know, basic things like that. Um, but I haven't gone through and adjusted colors or anything. So they're very similar, but similar does not mean the same. And you have to really look at things and see what your main focal point is with this bird, this photo, what, whatever you're trying to get across, whatever connection you're trying to make. And I can tell you right now, I'm, I'm leaning towards this. I, I think it has a more defiant look. I think it looks, it complements the, the hostility of this iris and this eye and this looking at us. And, you know, it, the bird can very clearly see me and in fact, I think that may even be my head right there in the reflection. So I, I, I was close and they're okay with that, but it's interesting to me. And so now that's a little more passive and it's clearly looking down and this has a different tonal aspect. Now, when we get down to this level, if you can see there's a switch, this is more puffed up. And so it's literally breathing and you can see the difference. Um, and so puff, 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 puff. Now these were all taken. I don't know which in the, I've already called out, but I probably took 30 or 40 in a burst. So about a second of uh, photos, but um, so between these two, I think I like that one more. So with that in mind, I'll hit one on my keyboard, get rid of that. So now we have four left. And I think the color on this and the light on this is good. It's probably the best of the um, where the bird's looking pretty much horizontal. This is a little dark. This is essentially the same shot. And just a slight change in the light in between. So with that in mind, let's just make sure that it's literally, yeah. Okay. So 
if we were going to choose between these two, I would choose this one. So we'll get rid of this one. So now we have three instead of five. So now at this point, we're really looking between here and here. Let's see. I like the inherent contrast and saturation here. I, I, I like the light down here. Now, whether that survives the, the crop, I don't know. Um, I like this position better, but the lighting isn't as great. That being said, we can always fool with that um, as we're going. And this is very moody and intense. If I were going to choose between specifically one or three, it would be based on gut. It would be one because, and the reason for that, honestly, is the light's good and the stick shadow here isn't obstructing the eye. And that's, since that's our focal point here, what, what we're really going for, that's important to have completely clear. So I would nuke that one. So now we're left with two. And we have to decide. I don't know, guys. Now, when I say we're left with two, I'm not going to delete the one that I don't choose, but we're going to choose between these two as far as development. And what we're going to use is the front facing um, photo for this particular bird in this particular instance. I, I mean, ideally, we wouldn't have this right here. But again, like I said at the start, we're I'm, I'm exploring how you would see a bird more naturally. So um, what I'll do is whichever one I don't develop, I'll just leave it here. And if I ever come back and say, oh, no, actually, this would have been better, blah, blah, blah. Then I can do it that way. Um, I would go with this one, which was my original gut, but yeah, this is the one I would choose. All right, so with that in mind, let's develop it. Let's see how we can do. All right, so we've already auto adjusted. Let's do our shadows up and show saturate it, no, desaturate slightly, decontrast it rather. All right, and then we're gonna do negative 20 as usual. Now watch the histogram up here it should draw it farther over yeah okay so that smooths it out some so where are we actually losing that blue okay so down there we're losing detail i'm okay with that we're obviously going to be losing some detail i mean it's pushed all the way over to the left, but we don't have a lot of uh, lower clipping, so that's fine. All right, um, do we want to crop this? I don't know, I don't think so, but let's find out. Let's see. I mean, it kind of has to be a central. Yeah, that's, that's a terrible crop regardless, but... Um, okay. If we do it at the one third, no, that's not going to be right either. I mean, we could go really close. I don't know. Uh, I think uh, I think our original just open frame is probably going to be the best. Um, let's see. Okay, so. From there, do we have any color correction to do? We could fool around with the haziness there, but again, it's kind of the it's kind of the vibe. Let's see. Let's see if the radio filter does anything wonderful. Make it subtle because it's okay. There's that. Do we want to desaturate this some? Probably.
Go to 10 like that, and then let's see about our color balance. Okay, and we've got, as a baseline, this feels green, blue. This was November 19th, so things hadn't fully gone late fall, early winter yet. So let's see. That'll cool it down a lot. Not sure we want to cool it though. Maybe we want over here in the red. I think that's better because it amplifies these fall leaves that are actually coming in there. And then what can we do? We can come back to our radial. And since we've, oh, okay. So we didn't leave that. Okay, there we go. there. So we really have, I mean, we've taken the saturation down. We've moved it towards the red spectrum a bit. Um, I mean, our color balance is good the way we had it, I thought. It's obviously unacceptable. The cloud, that's a lot warmer, but I don't think that's reality. So this is cool. I think we have nice amounts there. The lighting's good. We could fool a little bit if we wanted to with um, some of these brushes and amplify this or darken things down depending. But I honestly kind of like this the way it is. And let's see. Is it balanced? Yeah. I mean, it was balanced in camera. So, so that's a rough overview and a very brief edit. I, I, I got lucky in the fact that I didn't have to do a whole lot to this to make it look the way I wanted it to, which was, you know, the way it actually looked at the time. Um, I think the radial is good because it amplifies the um, feeling of looking in through the brush to see the bird and, and, and had that discovery in that moment. And we've got this mockingbird, incredibly defiant face. They're actually really sweet nice birds, but they look, you know, aggressive. Um, we desaturated it slightly uh, and yeah. So in any case, I, it's a bit of a ramble on this one, but you know, it's hard to say, you know, here's point by point. This is, there's no hard and fast rule about choosing between photos um, in a series. So, or a burst. So my final advice about that is, if you remember, my, my gut reaction was this photo that we ended up with. 95% of the time, your gut is going to tell you. And at that point, it's just verifying as far as I'm concerned and setting up what you think is important for your shot. You know, for me, it's always going to be sharpness always you know that's the primary first characteristic i'll take a sharp photo over a more personality driven photo um mostly because that's kind of like a huge amount of my work is focused on getting the absolute sharpest the absolute most detailed that i possibly can that's why i sit there and take usually two or three hundred shots of a single bird to get a single frame you know these you know, stupidly low ISOs and shutter speeds for handheld and all this kind of stuff. But so that's my thing. And then from there, it's personality and lighting. So in any case, and you can see how we got to that point and got to this photo from that mentality. Now we were lucky in the sense that we had four or five, whatever it was that we were choosing from that were perfectly sharp. Um, you know, so that worked out this time, but there have definitely been instances where I'll go through, you know, at literally this level 
and go one, two, one, two, back and forth and choose, you know, based on absolute pixel level sharpness. So, and in the long run, does anyone ever see it to that degree? No, but at the same time, the sharper it is, the more it comes across it it really does i mean even if you're looking at a lower quality jpeg online or something like that which is probably where 95 98 99 percent of photos end up these days are on a website or on a screen somewhere uh, not printed then yeah i mean even at the lower result you know lower overall resolution or quality density um jpeg it will come across in a big way so i don't know all right well that's it for this one and um i hope that was helpful to some extent and uh i appreciate it as always thanks for watching